Did you know that spay and neuter resources are harder to find in rural areas? It truly leads to a problem of overpopulation. But two Washington nonprofits are working together to change that. Greater Good Charities recently joined forces with Team Okanagan Animal Rescue to host the state's largest spay and neuter event in Okanagan County. Here to tell us more are two people who were instrumental in this effort, Jill Service, animal lover and wife of Mariner's manager, Scott Service, and Dr. Ruth Parkin from Greater Good Charities. Thank you both for being here and everything you've done for the animals. Thank you so much for having us today. I mean, I don't think people realize what happens when you have an overpopulation of animals. It's sad, it's tragic, so I'm glad that you've done everything you can to stop it. Jill, I know helping animals is a huge passion for mm -hmm. you. It is. You and Scott own two rescue animals, which is we awesome. Do. Yep. So tell me about Nelson and Wilson. Okay, we've got Wilson, who's a lab beagle mix. We've had him for about six years. And then we added Nelson, named after Nelson Cruz. We just added him in July of last year. He's four years old, and he's a Springer oh, Spaniel. He's so cute. I love it. How did you get into animal welfare work? I started working in shelters back when Scott was in the minor leagues, back in Tucson, Arizona, a very wow. long time ago. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, I just made it my life's mission to continue to work in the animal space wherever he was working. Because you've seen it on the front lines, then. You've seen some I of have. the tragic things that people don't even ever get to see. Absolutely. It, it, it can be really shocking the first time you recognize the, the need across the country. Yeah, it really, it really, really is. Um, so what happens, let's talk about what happens when a pet doesn't get fixed. And we talked about the overpopulation, mm -hmm. but how does that affect the system as a whole? It does affect in many different ways in terms of resource de depletion, mm -hmm. in terms of people being able to retain pets in their own home. Um, kennels, shelters across the state are completely overwhelmed right now with inventory mm -hmm. of all different types of animals. Um, we have a lot of breeder relinquish mm -hmm. going on right now where people who breed animals yeah. actually are not able to place them in homes mm -hmm. and they're ending up in our shelter system. Overbreeding, I know that mm -hmm. in, in some areas in California they were overbreeding yep. pit bulls and you see these animals coming to the shelter and unfortunately what people don't realize is that it means a lot of euthanization. It does. I mean if we're going to be really honest, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty dramatic if you knew the amount of animals. And I love that Seattle, we they, they it's a safe haven, but there's just not enough flights yeah. and, and buses that can get up here. So Dr. Mm -hmm. Parkin, I, I wanna ask you, why are spay and neuter resources harder and harder to find in rural areas like Okanagan mm -hmm. County and rural areas across the country, frankly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, rural areas, is, um, especially areas with um, uh, a large low income population, um, it can be really challenging um, to provide access to care to these communities. And there are vets in this area, there are great vets in this area, mm -hmm. um, Okanagan specifically. Um, they are working really hard. A lot of them are um, mixed animal practices, so they are spending their time out on farm calls and they're right. also trying to run a business in town and yeah. they are definitely overtaxed. We can't really ask them to lower their services to meet this community where they are economically because yeah. they need to stay in practice and it's important that those businesses succeed because they are an important part of the community. So the, um, the low income uh, service providers, so it relies on shelters and, mm -hmm. and specific low income um, service providers to really meet the needs of these communities. And um, it's challenging for sure. A lot of them are underfunded, understaaffed, and just can't meet these um, the needs of the communities. So tell us about the good fix, which is the yeah. big fix. Mm -hmm. So what what we do is high quality, high volume spay and neuter. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, for anyone who doesn't know what that is, we um, bring in highly specialized teams um, per, of veterinary professionals. So this is uh, veterinary surgeons, technicians, mm -hmm. and animal handlers who. Um, are trained in specific practices that allow us to use our time very efficiently, get a, mm -hmm. get a whole lot done in a short period of time and, um, <gasps> and, uh, um, and without compromising efficiency, uh, oh, sorry, without compromising safety mm -hmm. because really safety is our number one priority. Patient safety is so important. So the, 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 the movement is good fix, mm -hmm. but when you have an event, it's called the big fix? So that was, um, that was a name actually that Team Okanagan came up mm -hmm. with as kind of a play on our mm -hmm. good fix name. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yep, yep, and we did 1,027 really animals mm -hmm. in four days. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Kudos, that's yeah. incredible. Thank you. The need was overwhelming. We, had, uh, we were full every day. We met capacity by 6.15 in the morning. Mm -hmm. we had, I'm looking uh, at this line of cars right yeah, here. Yeah, we had people sleeping in their cars all night to receive yep. services for their animals. We had people who walked for like miles because their cars ran out of gas mm -hmm. with their animals. Yeah. Everyone who came was very dedicated to being good animal owners. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. Yeah. 
That's beautiful. It was really inspiring and says a lot about that community mm -hmm. and how much they really um, want to take care of these pets. Mm -hmm. Seriously, because it's not easy when, you know, it's, it's oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So the turnout was really massive, but I hear there are mm -hmm. discussions about maybe doing another round of clinics this year. That's the hope. Uh, we're certainly in discussions, yeah. and the hope is that we can come in before the end of the year and um, have another large, impactful clinic. What we're really trying to do mm -hmm. is ease the burden on these shelters. As mm -hmm. Jill was pointing out, you know, if, if these animals are not spayed and neutered, then these shelters become overwhelmed with the progeny mm -hmm. of the animals yep. that did not get spayed and neutered. Um, and so what we can try to do is ease the burden on these, these low-income um, providers yeah. uh, mm -hmm. by, um, one, taking the burden off of them to provide <clears throat> the actual services, yeah taking the burden off of them to intake all of these other animals mm -hmm. um, and then on a kind of more individual basis um, you know allow this community who very much loves their yeah. animals to be able mm -hmm. to provide mm -hmm. what most of us feel is very basic pet care right well, you're all animals. used to because we go and we exactly. adopt and it's already right. done people don't understand yeah. when a kid yes. comes up to you and it becomes part of your life yep. you gotta right. take care of it right yeah um, so if someone wants to volunteer say there's a vet out there that says I want to offer my services or if you just want to find out more to help you know you know, help you guys at the organization. How do people yeah. find out more? Well, if it's a veterinarian, they absolutely should reach out to the, <laughs> to the group over at Good Fix. And, okay. and we did have um, some local veterinarians who did just that. Mm -hmm. Nice. And came out and did some amazing work for us out there. Uh -huh. And then, of course, in terms of the volunteer space for the type of work that I'm doing, every rescue, every shelter in the state is in drastic need of assistance. My group is Team Okanagan Animal Rescue, but there are groups across the state that could really use mm. a lot of help. All right, Jill, well, you have a place here anytime you need to talk right, about this. You. Can I ask before you go about your pins? <laughs> We're wearing the Tucker pin, which is, uh, this is a dog that came from the Okanagan region, and he is the Mariners' team dog, and he was adopted two years ago from the ok Okanagan area. That's awesome. Very thank cool. you both for coming on. Thank you for everything that you do, and, and for the animals, and for the people, really. I mean, mm -hmm. hearing people sleeping yeah. in their cars, it just, it warms the yeah, heart. It makes it you does. feel happy about humanity, right? Absolutely. Thank you both so much. Thank you.